six match resisting, then the Ben Finney Strong to advance to state. They survived two three to two wins in tournaments to advance. From Northwest Iowa, coach Dennis Benson and the Maple Valley Rams. It's the coach's first trip to state, but the third for the school. They lost three matches in the year's opening tournament, then didn't lose again until the quarterfinals at state. With five juniors in the starting rotation, they could be back next year. Southeast Iowa Super Conference champions, they beat the defending state champions in the district meet. Welcome coach Dennis Chandry and the Minneapolis Bullets. in the tournament string. Their only losses were to three highly rated teams, including two in the tournament field. It's the seventh trip to state for the school and the sixth for the coach from the North Iowa Conference, Coach Jody Dozer and the Osage Green Devils. This team came to the tournament with only two losses for the year, one to the 2A finalist Spencer. They won the 1990 state championship, and with three underclass starters, this Northwest Iowa power should return again next season. They advanced to state with only one lost game in the tournament series. They then lost in the semifinals to the state's number one rated team. Their own final rating was third in 1A. Welcome now one of the fine programs in Iowa, Coach Wayne Westenberg and the Unity Christian Knights. concludes the 1992 Volleyball Parade of Champions. We'd like all teams, please do an about face that they might be recognized by the other side of the house. We thank you. gentlemen, our national anthem, played by the Union High School Pep Band under the direction of Bruce Mathewson. season center and uh, certainly as you can you saw the parade of uh, champions some old names and some new names to come around coming up it's 2a championship as Dubuque Waller the Golden Eagles number one take on fourth rank Spencer the Tigers and we'll be back with more activities from five season center more on Iowa Public Television this week living in Iowa bounces
bounces back. I'm Morgan Halgren. Follow the bouncing ball to Living in Iowa this week and see how a flood-damaged DeWitt dance hall is making a comeback. Travel through time and remember one of Iowa's most famous writers, Ruth Succo, and find out how in Vinton a small business is putting bounce back into some tired rubber. Watch Living in Iowa, always something a little different, tomorrow night at 7.30. Stay tuned for more TV worth watching right here on Iowa Public Television, a resource for Iowa's future. Major funding for this program was provided by Friends of Iowa Public Television. Welcome back to the Five Season Center in Cedar Rapids. Iowa Public Television Sports presents the 1992 Girls High School Volleyball Championships. Tonight's match features Dubuque Wallard and the Spencer Tigers in the 2A Championship Round. Hi everyone, Mick Trier along with Sandy Stewart, former University of Iowa volleyball coach. We got a good one coming up here. Going to tell you about the 1A first. It was Lincoln, the number one team, winning it in five games over Hubbard Radcliffe. But it's 2A time and it's number one and number four. Right, uh, Dewey Quallet comes in uh, number one all season. A great experienced team against a very young team, 11 underclassmen on Spencer's team. Looking at Spencer, as you mentioned, a very young team. They're coached by Kent Prescott, ninth year coaching overall. Right, Kent's one of the nice um, up and uh, coming coaches in the state. Worked hard all year round to get his kids to this position. Well, his big keys are going to be number four, Monica Harden, the setter, Katie Austin, a right side hitter, and Sonia Van Helden, the middle hitter. Monica Harden, the senior, runs their 5-1 offense. Lately has been going to a 6-1 sophomore left-handed, Katie Austin, and also to the middle, Sonia Van Harden. On the other side of the net, it's Dubuque Wallard, ranked number one all year long. They're going for three in a row. Right. They haven't lost a, t a match in the state of Iowa and so since the 89 state finals. They've won for three consecutive years. Tom Keating there, you can see him, the head coach, 10th year of coaching for him, very intense coach. Right. A great program. He's really built one of the top programs in the country and was just recently named coach of the year. Well, they've got a lot of weapons in D here as you take a look. It's Kelly Sher, Jennifer Bolin, and Jennifer McFadden. Three big keys for them. Jen Bolin, a, a senior, 5'9 center, has been their great player the last three years. She's been setting a lot to Jen McFadden, a 6'1 outside hitter, and to Kelly Sher, who's had a great senior season. Well, it's number one and number four with Spencer and Dubuque Wallard. Sandy, the keys for tonight's game, tonight's match. Uh, the key, I think, for Spencer is going to be composure. Playing against a very experienced Dubuque team who is ranked eighth nationally. If they can keep their composure early, they'll they'll hang there with, with Wallard. Well, it's the 2A championship as Dubuque Wallard takes on Spencer. Should be a good one. We'll have it for you next on Iowa Public Television. Look around and you'll see the future. Those who will take dreams we've got to have and make them come true. And others who will answer the questions we haven't begun to ask. Of course, we have no way of finding the next Edison or Van Gogh. So we give them a place where they can find that gift for themselves on the children's programming of public television. Perhaps the finest minds in history are here now. Where they go tomorrow is entirely up to us. Iowa Public Television, a resource for Iowa's future. Welcome back to Five Season Center for our 2A championship between Dubuque Wallard and Spencer, and we're getting ready for a good one here. Dubuque Wallard ranked number one, and Spencer ranked number four. You can see the Golden Eagles at 44-1-0, and the Spencer Tigers bring an impressive 42-4 and two record going into this one going to be a great match again. Dubuque's been here two times, two-time defending state champions. Got a young, hungry team with Spencer, and we'll see how it turns out here. Let's like take a look at the starters here. First up for the Golden Eagles, it's going to be Weezerek in the back row. Share the outside hitter. Pimpso also a hitter. Bow in the center. McFadden, the big gun in the middle, and Westoff from the back row. Most of these kids are being heavily recruited by major Division One programs. They're going to go and play in college. And some kids from Spencer as well. Here's their starters. Hard in the center. Skettinga, the outside hitter. Cruz in the back row. Tilton, the middle hitter. Austin out of the back row. And Van Helden, an outside hitter. And she is a good one at 6-2. Right. Austin's been playing great. Only a sophomore. 6-1 left-handed player. She's going to be the core of their team.
team the next three years. There's Tom Keating, who's really built something here in Dubuque Wallard, certainly. Right. Tenth year, and uh, coaching and looking for a fifth championship for him alone. Exactly. One of the dynasties in the state and in the nation. Currently ranked eighth in the country. They've lost one match all year. That was to Mother McCauley out of Illinois, a perennial powerhouse in the country. And a, a great program here for the state of Iowa. And here's Kip Prescott in his ninth year, fifth at Spencer, and him, he as well and his team had one goal, and that was to play Dubuque Wall in the championship, and they have reached at least their goal. They're playing Dubuque Wall. Right, they beat Hall Western Christian, who have been here the last two years. They feel like they can beat Hall Western Christian. They can play with Dubuque Waller. One nothing, Waller out of the box early. Now Waller serving. Set to the outside here for Spencer, their big girl on the outside is number 15, Van Helden. An easy free ball over here, see what uh, Spencer can do with it, and they go to Kate Austin. A nice back set to Austin that time, they dig it out of there, this time they'll set it to the middle to Van Helden, and that one just out. A little wide, a good swing, playing aggressively, it's good to see that uh, Spencer's not intimidated, they're up there swinging. Well, they are indeed, here's Wallard Westoff serving for the Golden Eagles. Set the outside to Van Helden, but blocked right back at her. Right, McCannon and Bowen are up there, two of the best blockers in the state, and they just put a roof on that ball. 3 nothing, Wallard out of the blocks early. Again, good passing by Spencer. Nice back set to Austin. That one will be down, so nice. they get the side out. Again, they're going to have to keep going to her. She's been extremely effective. A great reach being 6-1. Here we go on the replay. You can see a great jump and right over the top of the block. Here comes Spencer. First to serve is going to be number 12 of Christy Tilton. And a good block up in the net here by Spencer. And McFadden, they keep it alive, trying to dig it out. Good hustle by the Tigers, but no can do. And it'll be a side out for the view. A little off-speed shot. You can see on the replay. We call it power tip. Pushes the ball straight down. It's almost a hard handle. And the lineup is Don Markham now for the Duke Wallard. They serve deep. Tough serve. Scudding will have to hit it across, and now they'll have an opportunity to set to McFadden in the middle, but no, they go outside. Single block by Spencer. Gary Smith. Again, Wallard just too much to handle up at the net. Pretty awesome out there. Just a sophomore trying to block against the power of the Duke Wallard. And the Duke Wallard is out to a 4 nothing lead here. Set to the outside, going to Van Helden, and they got that double block in there. Saying they're just camped out out there. They know they're either going to go outside to Van Helden or to Austin. They're going to have to uh, start tipping or hitting around the block for Spencer. We've already got a timeout here. Indeed, we do by Kent Prescott. If Spencer wants to take a timeout, he's down five minutes. Let's get on the huddle block us. But if they block us, don't let that bother you, okay? We'll come back. Well, let's not say that we can't do anything. We can. We're going to go a one with Sonia and a four with Nan. But let's have the pass. Now, they serve very tough. So wait to commit yourself. Stay back, stay back. Tough loader. Get your, bo get your body on the right side of the ball, okay? Come on now. Again, he's pulling the set numbers. Sonia Van Helden outside. That's the one on the outside. And a four to Tanya. Just kind of just calm down. They're playing pretty well, but just need a little more aggressive at the net. There you can see Spencer out of the uh, Lakes Conference back to play here. The outside little tap over, and that one uh, down by okay. Katie Austin, but so far, certainly. It's a kill for Austin. You can see the players on both sides are wearing the newest volleyball garb. They are called skids. A lot of times you go to the floor for a ball, you get horrendous floor burns on your forearms, on your hands, and this protects the hands from floor burns, and the way these players play defense, they need them. Katie Austin, who the jump serve with 75 aces on the year, serves it into the net. Side out, Dubuque Wallard leading 5-0 over Spencer, set to the outside of Eldheisen. Nice Up hit the off air. the block. And that'll be good for a side out. That was a close call for Jenny, well that was uh, Don Markham tried to save the ball, almost sprained her ankle on the uh, net support over there. Good hustle by Dubuque. And Cruz serving here for Spencer. Great serve. They handle it well. Right at the net. Tap back over by Jenny Skeninga. Right at a great, great serve by Nan Cruz that set up that play. Skeninga with a 24-inch jump. Great jumper. Again, right over the top of Jen Bolin. Couldn't handle it. Another great serve. This one up in the net. McFadden trying to get the kill down. Can't. Now the set down the middle to Van Helden. And that's a double block. And that is three block assists now for... McFadden's going to get hard to hit around. She's got a tremendous arm span, a great reach 
shoulder to the net, really tough to hit around. And now getting ready, Jennifer McFadden ready to serve. She's being recruited by Stanford, Nebraska, Ohio State, and Texas. And all the top uh, top 10 Division I programs in the country want this kid. Good serve by McFadden, though. Quick set. Quick low set, and couldn't get it down there with Jenny Scudding. It's a nice try by Spencer. Again, they're not being silly. They're running their offense. They're doing some nice things. Still playing aggressive. Bad serves again deep. In the gut of the outside is Skettinger. That one again a little long. Right, I think they're a little intimidated by the, the big block. Uh, their center is going to have to settle them down a little bit. She's running the offense, doing a nice job. Monica Harden really not, runs a nice offense. Four hit errors in a row here by... Nice set outside. By uh, Spencer. Now just hit it over. Free ball here. Going to be set this time by Hart on the outside. This time they just tap it over trying to place it. And Monica's doing a great job scrambling, setting the ball. And again, Amy miss, Schuster. A mishandle overpass. And you can't do that to the Butte. They're going to take advantage. Let's watch the replay. You can see a ball control error. And it's a kill for the Butte ball. We're going to time out. Time out of the four. Waller has jumped out to an 8 1 lead. Let's see if Tom Keating's at the Butte ball. Big hands, just put a barrier there. She's trying to hit over and everything's out of bounds. We're okay. She'll pull it down, it'll come right at you. All right, watch the jump set. We haven't seen that yet. 15 is weak side. If they get a good pass, they're gonna go to her, all right? Let's go. They're talking about going weak side. Weak side means right side. If they get a good pass, and it's Spencer, they're gonna set the right side of the court to their power, which is Katie Austin. So they'll be ready for that. Also, just to keep their block strong. You follow it out of the Mississippi Valley Conference, you can certainly see they have found a lot of success in that conference. Last time that Dubuque Wallard lost was uh, against Hull in right. 1989 of the championship. In the championships, they were uh, picked to win that match and lost, I believe, in five to Hull Western Christian. Came back and won the last two years. 113 in a row they have won. It's quite a record. McFadden serving here. They'll set again to the outside. Uh, Scudding it, trying to get that down, trying to get that combo. Oh, man. That one's out, yeah, just, just out just by Cher. Again, Spencer's doing a nice job, and Monica Hart is really setting the nice up, keeping her composure, giving the hitters something they can work with. So far in the box, Wallard with four, Spencer with one. We've got Kate Scott. I always call her great Kate Scott. Now that Scott. jump serve here and by Kate Scott. And she's got an ace. Another ace. She had 37 on the year, and she gets another one to her credit. She really got hot in the regional finals and helped this team out. Here she goes. Again, another great serve for great K. Scott. Trying to dig it out here. Knocked over. They'll get a free ball. Chance to set it up. A nice set by Harden. That time they really got it to Scudding. Moved it up a little closer on the right. set in the net. Great set by Harden. She's really putting the ball outside where they can do something with it. Got a couple of points on the board here for Spencer. Here's Scott again. Jump serve. Oh, a tough one to handle. McFadden on the back row cannot. And most teams have been picking on Jennifer McFadden in the back row. She's not as good a passer as some of the other players on the Waller team. That's three. Here comes Kate Scott. Goes again to McFadden. Outside, kill attempt. That one's in. Just inside the line. That was a tough, tough choice there by Kate Scott. Thought it was going to go out and dropped in. But Spencer gets four back, and Waller leads 8-4 in our game one. There's the replay. All right, that was uh, Kelly Scher, one of their great outside hitters this year for Dubuque. Going right over the top of the block. Wieserick now serving here for Dubuque Waller. Long set to the outside, trying to go to Scudding again. Tough win to return. They'll just... Get a free ball coming over here to Spencer. Again, they'll get a chance. Move a little closer to the net. And Dubuque's playing good transition, playing some nice defense. Spencer's doing a nice job getting it set up. Good job by number four, Monica Harden. At the net, knocked over by Harden. Free ball upcoming here. Harden again will set a short one this time. Good, Good dig by Wizarek. And, and again, Spencer was ready for that second ball over by Bowen. Coming up. Too long. Too Out. long. It's a great rally. And again, Spencer's playing aggressive. At least they're making aggressive mistakes. Jenny Skedding, a good hard hitter, but that one a little too hard. 9-4, right, Dubuque's kind of pulling out here, but uh, Spencer's been having some real bright moments playing pretty steady for a young team. Tom Keating, you can see him giving the serving position here for Dubuque Ballard. Both sides will call the serve. Good body control on the outside by Skedding. Knocked over here by Schuster, back into the net. That'll be four hits and a side out for Spencer. All right, both teams have an aggressive serving strategy. Coaches are 
giving them uh, court assignments on who to serve and where to serve. Monica Harden, the center now, serving here for Spencer. Up in the net. Oh, man. Nice play. That's tough. It's what you call a back quick or an 11. You see the hitter comes behind the center on a quick attack. Very difficult to stop. Very few high school teams can run that play. 9-4 to Butte. Sharon now serving into the net. Well, unforced air there for the Butte. Don't see that too often. Gives uh, Spencer a chance to get back into the game here. Here's Spencer serving. Tom Keating didn't like that too well. Not too well at all. <laughs> Good nice serve. pass by Jennifer McFadden. Set the outside to uh, Heidi Pencil. She gets it down. And that's uh, Heidi Pencil. She's the uh, state champion hurdler, number eight. You don't hear a lot about her, but she's the most effective hitter on the team. 184 kills. Yeah, the only junior on the team this year, 5'10". A great athlete, as I mentioned, the uh, state champion hurdler. And a missed cue and an ace this time. Nice job by Kelly Westhoff. West that's yes. 68 aces for her now. All right, a very aggressive server again. Position five, that's uh, deep center back, and she hits it. Trying to give you a shot at Tom Kidding, see where he's pointing for the serve, and a block up to the front. Jennifer McFadden. Got the, got the blocking machine back in the front court here. McFadden, you can see all over that net. Hard to hit around those arms and hands. Fadden at 6-1. I got to think of Leach. Double block. McFadden so getting help so that time by Bohan. McFadden now with the kill attack gets it down. Again, a great offensive and defensive player. Aggressive, big arm swing. You can see this. Big arm swing and pounds. Three kills by McFadden. Makes it a 12-4. Waller lead. Got a substitution here for uh, Spencer. They're doing a little change. Maybe trying to slow down the momentum of Dubuque. Dubuque's on a roll here. Going to try and set it backwards this time to Austin. Uh, oh, man. And there McFadden's again, McFadden's right there. It's going to be McFadden right against Austin. There they are. Boy, they're tough. What are you going to do when you got McFadden and Pimsel up there? I'd say tip. <laughs> Tip or try and get off the top of the block. If you can hit out on the ball, try to hit it off the top of the hands, but that's a pretty tough block to hit over. And a service air here for Dubuque Waller does not make Tom Keating very happy with Waller leading 13-4 in game one of this 2A championship match. Now serving is Christy Tilton. Also the backup setter. And they've got Sonia Van Helden back in the front row. She's 6'2". We'll see if she can, how she can do against Jenny McFadden. There's another quick back attack. Quick back here to Austin. Lock back oh. at him. Oh. Great block by Heidi Pencil again. The, the uh, junior on the team. We've got a sub here for Waller. Doing some backcourt substitution. And the Waller fans are having a party. 13-4, good dig out, but can't do it, and that's going to be an ace. Again, we're looking at game point, 14-4. Jenny Bullen looking for the service signal. Where do you want me to go, Coach? Game point upcoming here for Dubuque Wallard. Short set, and that one's going to be out, and that will be game one. And pretty quick game. Again, Dubuque just showed its power offensively. Hold defensively. it, hold everything. Uh-oh. I'm not so sure that they're going to get... That is not correct. Oh, they're going to bring Dubuque Wallard out, apparently. <laughs> Dubuque has a habit of, as soon as the point is over, the game's over, they run off the court. Uh, and now they're going to have to bring him back out, Dubuque Wallard. A late net call, and then they got to finish this game. A late net call, indeed, by... Right, well, let's, let's watch, see let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, McFadden got it. McFadden got the net. It's a good call. But again, Dubuque has a habit of just uh, getting on to the next game. Let's bring this one's down. They were already off the floor. Good on the replay. McFadden just touching it, so it's still 14-4, and Spencer will be serving on the side out. Well, it's they're it's still doing the boogie-woogie or something up there. They're still getting back to play. I don't know if that's the one called a timeout or if they just gave Dubuque extra time to get back or what. I don't know. It took a long time to get the game resumed here. But serving here is Katie Austin. for McFadden and she's got a lot of blocks as well. And that one just tapped over by the setter. Right, call a dump, but a lot of times it catches the defense off guard. They're not expecting the second ball over the net. And Cher, that one's out. Just out, just out. If they're calling for a touch, Dubuque is 
wanting a touch, but they're not going to get it. And that'll bring up a side off for Spencer. It's 14-4 here in game one. Gail Spencer Schreiner. trying to get something going. A nice serve by Gail Schreiner, one of the juniors on the Spencer team. McFadden. But you just can't stop McFadden. I mean, she's hitting outside, she's hitting middle, right side. Get her in the back row. <laughs> Spencer's probably glad to see her back there. Five kills for McFadden. This is game point for Dubuque Wallard here. Nice pass by Spencer. And again, they're going to the right side. That one on the back side to Sonia Van Helden, but no. And, and that is the game. They had to wait a sure. second and see. <laughs> but it is going to be the game, and game one belongs to Dubuque Wallard. The Golden Eagles, 15 to 4. All right, again, Spencer's playing a good game, but Dubuque is just so overpowering. They're just running so many different offensive sets, uh, blocking. It's a great game for Dubuque Wallard. And Dubuque Wallard owning that net up there with Jennifer McFadden and the rest of them. See some of the crazy Wallard fans here. They have quite the uh, the fans that came down from Dubuque. Doing a little bit of the uh, who knows what up there, having a party. There are some of the fans on hand to cheer for their favorite 2A team. While there's a break in today's match, let's take a look at the 1991 2A Finals. In the 1991 2A matchup, it was the third consecutive time that Dubuque Wallard and Hull Western Christian met in the finals. Hull jumped out to an early lead, winning the first two games. Dubuque Wallard came back with poise and power to win the next three games and match. The win gave coach Tom Keating and the Dubuque Wallard Golden Eagles their eighth state championship. Back at Five Seasons Center at Game 2 upcoming here, but the first one belongs to Dubuque Wallard, 15-4. And Sandy, if you are Kurt Prescott of Spencer <laughs> right now, what are you telling your squad? They didn't play that bad. No, you know, not that badly. I mean, they're not making that many mistakes. It's just that Dubuque is playing so well right now. I think the, the bright things for Spencer was uh, Kate, uh, Monica Hart setting. She really does a nice job. Shows her senior leadership, runs a nice offense. And they've got that young Katie Austin who's really showing some promise. Very composed for a sophomore, so we'll see if they can come back and uh, give, a, give a, a little bit better game this time around. There you can see the people Wallard as they go four outside, come back out of the fourth. Kate Scott also did well for Spencer and Jenny Skettinga in the first game. And they're going to need some good ones here in our second one as we get ready. Certainly Dubuque Wallard with a lot of weapons here. Exactly. As we mentioned, most of their players are being recruited by Division I volleyball programs. Uh, Tom's got a reputation around the country as, a, as developing great collegiate players. Uh, Heidi Pemsel, I believe, no, excuse me, uh, Kelly Westhoff for Dubuque has already signed a letter of intent for basketball to play at UNI. So some great, great athletes here at Dubuque Waller High School. Certainly, as we saw up there at the net, certain to be a big key. McFadden, one of them, along with, with uh, 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 Pemsel, certainly with that double block is very ferocious. How can they hit around him? And it's going to be tough, I'm going to say. Here we got some stats here on the on the match. Again, pretty even in terms of ace serves, but kills way out. Uh, Wallet way out to uh, out 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 hit Spencer 10 to 4. And errors, I guess you know Spencer did make 10 errors. Serving or sees errors are probably the majority of those. When you take a look, McFed with five kills already in that game one, five blocks to her credit on the other side. Austin with two kills, Scott with two as well, and Skettinga with two blocks up in the net. Right, but I think they can't. The, the story right now has been Jennifer McFadden. She has just been unstoppable and impossible to hit around. We'll see if this young Spencer team can come back here. Well, the fans are on their feet for this 2A championship. Certainly, Dubuque Wallard out to a one-game lead here, 15-4. And Spencer's not out of it. Certainly, they have come to play here today. They're ranked fourth in the state. Under Kent Prescott, could you find a nicer guy than Kent? No, he's he a nice just a, guy? a great young coach and a lot of respect to his players. He, they work hard year-round, and they're going to be back. They're going to be a, a good team with 11 underclassmen on this uh, Spencer team. Spencer is serving here to start our second game. Set to McFadden to start this one off. Now yeah. we get a chance to set it here to the backside to Austin. Austin wins that battle against McFadden. Again, great composure and... A great court sense for only a sophomore, only 15 years old. She was AAU Player of the Year for the 16 and under team this past year. One-nothing one Spencer leading backside here to number eight. Nice, nice hustle. The big 
Spanish running a lot of uh, double quick, which means two players go in quick, and Spencer. And for Bowen trying to catch him off guard, and that one's over. Spencer's been scrambling. They've made some nice saves, but you, you just can't play defense all night. You've got to get some offense going. Takes nothing away from Spencer. They are hustling. Here's Dubuque Warren and Westoff serving. Good serve to the outside now to Austin trying to knock it down. A little higher, had to go above that double right, block. Off the net, and she just did what she could with it. Good hustle by Waller. And a Here. great kill by Van Helden. Comes through with a quick hit to the middle of four, Spencer. Side out for Spencer for the Tigers. Katie Austin serving again that lefty out there, left-handed sophomore. McFadden just didn't hit it into the net. Of it. Just hit it across, but she didn't hit it well right enough. That's the pass wasn't there. Jen Bullock had to race and just bump set it. And McFadden had a hard time handling the ball off the net. Spencer with an opportunity. Dubuque Waller not coming out firing in this no, second not, game. Not passing well at all. Get a free ball here for Spencer. See what they can do with it. They go to the middle. What a quick set to Sonia Van Helden. It's been working for him. And right now, Jen McFadden is just not, not up there blocking. She's a little late on the middle block. And Spencer's got a 3-0 lead. And that serve is okay. going to be long. A little too greedy, one of that quarter. Service error, Jennifer Bolin, upcoming player of the year in the Mississippi Valley Conference. 98 serves, leads the team, All-American this year. Great kid, yes, preseason All-American by the uh, Volleyball Magazine Mizuno. And Spencer's played great, another smart play by Spencer on the tip. And Cruz, there you can see Tom getting the head coach of the view forward, not happy. Oh, so 3-0 lead is kind of a surprise here. Waller is not passing the ball well. In our second game, they're going to go to McFadden. That one's out. A little hesitation in her approach there. And she's got 6-2, Sonia Van Helt to hit around her. Position 5, that's a left back position. Nice serve and a nice back set by Bolin. But the block is there. Going to McFadden again. This time just tapped it. Going to have a... Uh, Double hit by Spencer, that'll be a side out. It's a nice choice by McFadden. She's been just cranking the ball. They've stopped her a couple times, but she mixes it up here with the tip. A power tip. Almost tried, and we got a double hit on Spencer. Outside of Scudding Gut, just taps it over. Not trying to hit through that double block now, Sandy. No, just <laughs> really, it's not going to be too easy to hit around it. Once you hit into it. There they attempted to do it. Let's see again. It's Outside of Scudding Gut. That time she got through it. She's got a little bit more of a unique arm swing. It kind of comes across, and that time it caught the blockers off a little bit. There you can see her arm swing goes a little bit across her body, and it brings the ball in just enough to uh, get a kill and a side out for Spencer. Kate Scott, jump server now, serving here for Spencer. It's a nice pass by Kelly Scher. She has to come back and hit and puts the ball down for a kill. That one's out. Just out. Just out. Side out. McFadden now will go to the back row as she serves. The substitution here, we've got Amy Schuster coming in for debut. McFadden All-State last year, of course, will be an All-American this year. Yeah, they, she and Jen are on the top 50 uh, high school prospects in the, in the United States this year. A little tap over here by Spencer, now they get a chance to set to the outside to share through the double block. She's tough. Tough, great jumper, one of your uh, picture-perfect outside hitters. Nice set on the outside again. Great arm swing and pounds. Nice still pounds. serving here. Finally, the Buke Waller on the scoreboard, and now they'll get another one to make it a 4-2 score with Spencer still leading. A right, little bit off, off timing for uh, Jenny Skettinger. Here's McFadden serving again. Set across the wide, going to Scudding it down the line. She's still swinging. That was a close. That was a nice try. It almost caught the line. Three consecutive points here by Dubuque Wallard with McFadden serving. And that one is in. An ace serve for Jennifer McFadden. That's who a great, great serve by McFadden. She shows she can play in the front court and back court, and they've tied the game up here. And it's tied up at four. Again outside of Scudinga, that one blocked and out. It's blocked out of bounds. Nice hustle on the coverage just to make sure it was in. And you see Kent there applauding that play. Again, Prescott, the Spencer coach. Now he'll give a signal for the serve. See where he wants to go with it. Must be position one, a serving position. Sherry just taps it over. Now they're going to... Watch the scudding again. 
Boy, they go to skating a lot. Free ball up coming here, and that one, they yeah. can't dig out. A little uh, hesitation on the transition. You can see they decided not to block at the last minute, and that the defense wasn't quite ready for that. They didn't make their adjustment on the, uh, the defensive transition. And that's three now for Cher. Set up in the middle, and that one is going to be hit over. Yeah. Tried to find the back corner a little too long. Again, Spencer's kind of getting a little rattled here. Yep, not, yep. Not, not playing uh, their consistent game they couldn't can play. Dope's pretty good ball handler, and she this time heaved it over, and that'll be a carry on share for Dubuque Waller. Carry on. Held on a little bit too long on the ball handler. So we got a side out. And here comes Jenny Skettinger now. Will serve. You know she's got a 4.0 GPA. Very. Right, so many of these kids are on the honor roll. Just good all around uh, student athletes. Boy, they are. Hit over by Austin. Good dig in the back row by Wieserek. And Cher is double block up there, but she's going to get it down. And even off the net, she's hitting with power. Really getting up there and cranking. See Tom's looking where I want to serve now. Position five, left back. Let's see if they put it there. Serve two. Good serve. Not going to be returned. Got the ace. Great serve by uh, Kelly Cher. One of the seniors on this debut team. They have eight seniors, five starting for debut. Now we hit the net. 6-4, Dubuque Ballard has come back to take the lead here in our second game after winning the first one 15-4. Side out of coming, Spencer. A good picture of Sonia Van Helden, one of the tallest players in the tournament at 6-2. Good serve set, comes across here in the middle, and the Wallard with Amy Schuster. They don't use her that much, that one on the running. One of their seniors, a nice back set by Jen Bowen. They didn't expect it to go to her. You see the block is a little late getting there, right through the hands of Sonia. Then help. Boy, Westoff serving now for the view forward. Yeah, nice pass, nice back set to Austin. But the block is right there. Boy, they continue. They get the nice set by Spencer. Got the good arm swing by Austin. And then the double block by the view forward. Batting up there. And Hardy Pimsel's been playing a great match for Waller. One of their unsung heroes. One of the only juniors on this team. The only starting junior on the team. Another service error by Dubuque Waller. We've made a couple, yeah. It's unusual for Dubuque. Her and McFadden both side out. Spencer, here's Katie Austin now serving. Good great, hard turf. great leadership uh, for a sophomore player. McFadden trying to hit it through oh, the double block. See if they can get it over. Oh, they do. Great save for Spencer. Good dig. Another by Austin. They got a McFadden again down the middle. We're covering the tip, almost. And that's really tough because McFadden usually just cranks on the ball. You're back on your heels waiting. You can see their back. She goes up strong, and she's going to spike it. A nice little soft tip. A nice choice for Mc, by McFadden. Waller now serving. Free ball over here to Waller. See what play they run here. McFadden blocked by Van Helden. Van Helden's right there. A little bit slow and developing on that play, and Van Helden was right there on top of it. Van right. Helden trying to take here. away here. Getting nice block technique, gets over the net. McFadden didn't quite see her there. Except McFadden for it out, it's going to be a killer. An uh -huh. ever so low set, McFadden stopped. She's up there quick and early, which makes it possible. She's up in the air before the setter even sets the ball. The setter just gets it to her, and she just swings and puts it down. Duke Waller has certainly controlled the action here. They made 7 4, Van Helden. Nice coverage by Spencer. It's a good coach. You can tell a well-coached team, they cover their spikers. They really camp around that hitter. But it's going to be tough to get an offense when you're covering all your hitters and they're being blocked. We get a timeout here by Spencer. And Kent Prescott wants to take a timeout here for the Spencer Tigers and try and get him settled down. Let's get out of the huddle again. Side out. you got to go line on, okay? Because she's blocking that middle pretty big. All right? Same thing over there. Don't go too drastic. We don't want it out of bounds. But let's go off the outside of their arm, okay? Come on, let's start with a great pass. Okay, what he's saying is they have to hit down the line. There's no way they're going to get the ball cross court or straight through the big uh, block of McFadden. They're going to have to go down the line or else tip over the top. One of the crazy Wallet fans there, or that's a Spencer fan. Spencer fans Spencer here on fans hand. Here, you bet. Boy, they're here in full force. McFadden on the kill, and that's going to be five. Five kills for McFadden, a couple of blocks. It's what we call a happy birthday. It's a gift when you get an overpass like that. Heidi Pimsel 
short the serve. Set to the outside, just getting a good job in the corner. You see Dubuque put up three blockers that time. That, that's an unusual... Uh, and held it, double block back at him. Boy, they're having a tough time. They are just controlling it. Look at that. Look at that. Skettinga gets up in the air well, yeah. and there's that double block. They did a triple block and two double blocks. It's like there is a wall at the net on the Dubuque Waller side. A huge wall. That is a play. Dubuque's making a lot of service errors this game. A time Heidi Pimsel side out upcoming. Here comes uh, Kate Scott, the uh, great jump server. I'm going to call her Great Scott. If she can get on a roll here for Spencer. Here's a big key for Knoxville. Here's the jump serve. Right down the line, it's going to be an ace. She has got an excellent jump serve. And a key player coming off the bench trying to get her team sparked up here. And the serve upcoming. This one to the next, the far corner. Share going across court. It's going to be touched. It's down for the side out. Nice hustle by Waller. They really had to scramble to get that ball out on the serve. And again, Kelly Share going deep cross court. Finds the open spot on the court. McFadden with five kills and a couple of blocks. They're getting ready to serve. Game two, Dubuque uh, leading here, 10 5. And leading in games 1 0. Outside is Skettinga. This time going to loft it over. Well, you got McFadden at the back row finally. All right, now we got Kelly uh, Share up in the front court. I believe they're calling an illegal hit. That'll be good for a point. Makes it 11-5 as Tom Keating and company. <laughs> Looks pretty relaxed right now. It's unusual for Tom to look relaxed. At the net, Scudding taps it over. It's a nice try. Sets up here near side. Uh, Markham. Nice kill there by uh, Don Markham, one of the seniors, 5'11 senior. And again, that's due to the fact that Jen Bolin is really mixing up the offense. She's setting quick, she's setting outside, setting right side. Got a timeout here. Let's check in with Tom Kitty. Go here. Go uh, look, now, where, where are we at here? Let's go. In and go. Let's go. Sub. Sub, please. We had to cut that early because Spencer's Sub. back on the Six court. Three. The rules are for timeout. Spencer called the timeout. As soon as they're ready to go, the other team has to come back out. So he didn't get a chance to talk to him. As you can see, they're looking toward their ninth state title, the most in state tournament history. And that was uh, another service mistake here. Eric Walmart has four players with kills. Coach tells you how balanced they are. They're really mixing up their offense, giving everybody a chance to put the ball down. Pitch with an opportunity here. They draw 12-5. A nice pass by Waller. And that goes to Amy Schuster. Boy, they can use everybody. All right, they get the roll on the, on the tape on that. They get a side out and a substitution here for Dubuque as Tracy Wazorik comes in to serve in the back row. Well, five Dubuque winning here in our second game. Nice serve over. Okay, nice pass, a nice set. Here's Austin into the double. And they were going for a triple walk on her, but uh, she's tough to stop on the outside. A nice hit for Kate Austin. Going to get the side out, though, and here comes number five, Jenny Skelly, going to serve. And Spencer's not quitting. They're still hanging in here tough. Boy, indeed they are. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, about our cameraman. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a big laughter amongst Watch five season people. Watch it. Not a safe place to be down there. Sharon now serving for to be forward. A nice pass. See as Spencer gets something going here. They go to Austin. And there was a touch on the block, I believe. Yes, they're calling a touch, so it's a side out. Austin's been pretty much their uh, number one gun this whole tournament. You know, Sandy, that Spencer's down 12-5, but certainly they're fighting to keep in this one. Exactly. You wouldn't think it was 12-5. They're really playing very heads up, not showing a, a whole lot of signs of being int intimidated by the Duke. No indication as of yet by the official, and they're going to replay that one. I don't, the official got blocked out a little bit. I don't, don't know if she saw that it went in or out, and if anybody touched it. That's a good call, because if you can't call it, you might as well call a replay. Kent doesn't think so. He thought it was an ace. Chance to set it up across the line. Off-speed shot, covered well by Spencer. Going to Bell, Van Elden, up in the air. Great save. Here's Pimsel. Yeah, nice defense by Spencer. And they go back again to Austin. Austin. She's got the kill. Went off a block. 
point, excuse me. Now, upcoming is Schuster. Oh, a nice reaction up by Spencer. And Jen Bolin gets the spike, so we're going to do that very often. Now when you're the setter. <laughs> Austin knocks it over. Now he'll set it up to the outside. Oh, nice set on the outside. Pencil. Pencil with the kill. Again, really mixing up the offense. But Spencer's playing good defense. They're hanging in there. There's the replay. Just couldn't dig it out. Great, great jump and the swing by Pemsel. There's Tom Keating. Let's see if we can see what he's calling for a serve. Going Position three. three. That's short center front. So a little deep. Again, they go to Austin. They get her this time. Going to try it again. That's the uh, queen the double block. Really? Heidi Pimsel up there just can't quite handle it. She's 5'8", 5'10", 6'1", Kate Austin. Look at that. Great arm swing. Right through the debut block. Five kills now for Austin, and she's keeping him in this one. Now the side out upcoming. Debut Waller 12, Spencer 6 here, as you see Jennifer McFadden. All right, running that quick play, that kind of a quick shoot play to the position three has been real effective for debut. Six kills for McFadden already, and man, that is many blocks. Kind of an off-speed shot, caught the middle of the court. A kill for their big hitter, 6-2, Sonia Van Helden. Again, it's been a pretty even match. It's been on 12-6, so I think for three or four rotations. This has kind of been the That's three back kills for Van Helden as well. Back and forth here. Boy, that's one of those that's kind of ugly, but you're going to take it. Don Markham at the Waller just hit it over, and Spencer couldn't dig it out. Just kind of died as it went over the net. Watch yeah, this. Let's see it again here. Just... Nice top spin. That ball really drops quick with the top spin. Oh, good dig out by Hart, but they can't come up with it. Point for Dubuque Wallard. Right, that's, they've been stuck on 12-6 and uh, goes to 13-6 for Dubuque. 13-6 here, Dubuque serving. Nice serve. Yeah, Spencer's really passing pretty well considering how tough Dubuque is serving. And yeah. we have a double hit. That's going to be a carry that time on Markham. All right, she had a little out of position, tried to get to the ball and use her hands, but uh, wasn't able to get a good contact with it. Serve up coming here by Spencer. They're trailing 13 to 6. Again, they're picking on McFadden. They've been serving her a lot, but she's been passing well this game. Ah, uh, Cher this time. Kelly Cher, the other big gun. And we got a substitution here for a debut, I believe. Maybe Schuster will come back in and play the front line. McFadden now serving. Again, great server by McFadden. Oh, uh, Cher, boy, she's got such a strong arm. <laughs> That's a huge reach again. Spencer having trouble controlling the ball. We've got uh, game point for game two, 14 serving six. Game point upcoming here as McFadden. And we've got a substitution here to try and slow things down for uh, Spencer. They're bringing in number eight. Gail Schreiner. Schreiner. Kid that can play anywhere, can really jump. 23 inch vertical jump. And that'll be an ace serve by Jennifer McFadden and that'll be good for the game. All right, and they picked on that uh, Gail. She just came in cold, called her number. And unfortunately, she wasn't able to pass the ball and Wallert takes game two. Two games for Dubuque Waller, done for Spencer here in our 2A championship. But interestingly enough, Spencer got out to an early lead, Sandy, but couldn't hold on to Dubuque Waller. All right, they were ahead 3-0, but uh, the power of Dubuque was a little too much for him, and it just Dubuque kept picking away the lead, came back and won. That's the end of our second game with Waller leading two games to none. We'll be back with the third game in just a moment. Psst. Hey, you. I just thought I'd warn you, there's going to be a pop quiz on student voices this week. That's right. The topic is sexuality, so you better get your notes together. In each category, there are three questions. Dating. Here we go. Got him. What percentage felt that the guy initiates the first kiss? That's student voices, this Sunday evening at 6 p.m., right here on Iowa Public Television. I got the answers right here. You're viewing Iowa Public Television, a resource for Iowa's future. Back at five season center, Jennifer McFadden serving the ace to pick up game two. All right, she's been doing it in the front court and back court. A tough server, and she serves the, the game point to take him with the 2-0 lead. 
You know, Sandy, in that second game, it was Spencer coming out to an early lead, but it was 10 points in a row by Dubuque Waller to come back and win it. Right, Dubuque is just a, I mean, an overpowering team, and Spencer, again, not showing any factor of intimidation, playing very tough, but uh, Waller's just going to be a tough team to overcome. There's Tom Kidding in the Dubuque Waller at Golden Eagles, you know, coming on that second game, didn't look like Waller was ready to play. No, they weren't passing well, they got a little, little late, lazy. We'll see what the stats here for that game, too. Again, Waller uh, with uh, more of the offense shown by the number of sets they had. Uh, ace serves again, Waller four ace serves and errors, is five for Spencer. Again, making a few more unforced errors, but the big thing is blocks. Waller is controlling the net. Six to one in the block category. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Getting ready for game three here with Dubuque Waller and Spencer in our 2A championship. Who's going to join Lincoln in the championship here for 1992? And. Uh, Spencer certainly trying to make some adjustments to adjust around that double and triple block by the Buke Waller. Exactly. So they have not played that badly. They've had some really bright moments, some good serving. And uh, Monica Harden really has run a nice offense. Going to have to just hit it across, can't dig it out, so they're going to get the side out. Sometimes it's not as pretty, but it's effective. All right, Kate Austin with an easy little roll shot catches the Buke off guard. We've got a side out. Here's Spencer anyway, serving. Right. That's number 12, uh, Christy Tilton serving for Spencer. Oh, go to the back side that time to Heidi Pepsel, but just missed the timing. A little bit late getting there and uh, consequently hits the ball into the net. one nothing. Spencer out early in this one here. Dealt with the serve, long set, McFadden with a full arm swing oh, gets it she, down. She just really barrels in there. You can see she gets all her momentum behind that ball and just pounds it. You can see here, swing, great follow through. Goes right over the top of the block. Here's the serve by Dubuque Wallard. Backside, Austin. Again to Austin. She has been extremely effective against Wallard. Unfortunately, she's got to go to the back row now. Austin will serve here, trying to keep Spencer leading it. This is game three. They need this one to stay alive. Set down the middle for Dubuque Wallard. Good great, dig. Great dig by Kate Austin. She plays defense, too. That's good to see from a big player. A little tap over that time by Paul in. McFadden. They're covering both, but not that time. Jennifer McFadden, just when you think she's going to kill it, and she taps it over. It really mixes up her... Uh, Shot selection very nicely. Has every shot in the book at her command. Serve up coming here by Dubuque Wallard. Is the tough serve they call an illegal hit on Spencer. Gonna bounce off her shoulder. We're gonna call it carry. Sandy, we should talk about the officiating. I think it's very much improved over the years. This is about the best year at the state. Really, it's been fantastic. Uh, excellent officiating for the whole tournament. Uh, they're really uh, improving as the game improves. We were talking about the level of play, how it's improved. Has to go back to the athletes working harder and uh, coaches. Coaches have taken a real serious approach to the game of volleyball. That was number 15, Kelly Waskov here. Looking at her, he just got a ball right in the forehead. <laughs> Spencer serve. Here's Dubuque Wallard going down the line as Cher, and that'll be it. Just cuts it inside the line. Just cuts it. That's tough to do. Great, great shot. I mean, that was just straight down the line. Pretty, pretty shot. Now, the, the level of play in Iowa volleyball has just been unbelievable the last two or three years. 1-1 one, one outside to Skudinga going across court. Back over to Cher. Taps it over this time. They'll keep it in play. Nice hustle by uh, Austin in the backcourt. Oh, didn't get that one, though. Don Markham. Who do you watch on this Dubuque team? They got three or four hitters. Yeah, watch she's this. really mixing it up. Uh, Jen Bullen's going to all her hitters. It's a tough to defend a team with so many weapons. They'll get a chance to set it to the outside of Scuttinga. Nice job. Oh, was that ball saved? Yes, barely. Nice hustle by Dubuque. It was a great hit by Scuttinga on the outside. We've got a side out and a substitution here. We see Coach Perez Scott encouraging his players. Here comes Kate Scott into the lineup. Right. It's 2-1. Dubuque leading. Waller leads in the match. Two games to none. Up oh, went over the line that good time. Call. It's a good call. She's been close every time when she finally stepped over the line. And quickly she'll head out and Becca Cass. It's unfortunate. She does have a wonderful jump serve and really an effective weapon off the bench. And Cass who leads the team in digs goes to the back line. Nice set to the outside. But the block is right there. Good cover by Spencer. This time just tapped over by Hart. Cross court is an end. No, taken by Amy Schuster. 
Schuster. Just out, and uh, Amy Schuster tried to go on the cutback shot on the swing play. You can see she goes from her center front position to hit on the right side of the court. And got a little too off balance, swung too far across her body, the ball goes out. Good serve in the back. Nice transition by Spencer here, and they go, of course, to Kate Austin. Austin trying to try it all. Another big player, McFadden, playing some defense back there. At 6-1, trying to dig it out. There's cutting guy, that one will be too long. Out, no touch. Goes side out long. Still a tight game, 2-1. to one. No one's really taken uh, complete control of this game yet. It's gone back and forth. If you fall at leading 2-1 to one and leading 2-0 in games, you take a look at Kelly Schur, also another jump server. That one's going to be long. And that did get the cameraman. <laughs> Our cameraman is taking a beating out there. <laughs> you can hear the crowd getting into it here. <laughs> a little out of control in the jump circle. Side out, Spencer upcoming. Scutting guy. That one into the net. Another service air. When you serve aggressively, you make a little bit more service airs. Got a sub here for Waller. Kelly Westhoff will come back in. 67 aces, second on the team in aces this year. We'll sign a letter of intent with you and I to play basketball. And over to Austin. The block is there this time. And they go back to her. Going back across that double court. There you go. She has such a quick jump and a quick arm swing. Boy, this kid is going to be a great player. She's got two more years left. Oh, That's great three hit. kills for Austin. Great hit, it keeps the score at 1-2. This has just been a back and forth game here. Sonja Van Helden will be back in the front line. Serve up coming here by Spencer. They trail 2-1 in our third game. And another serve, service error here by Spencer. And that does not make Kip Prescott happy. Unfortunately for Christy Tilton, one of their juniors. Again, they're a young team. They've got lots of underclassmen. They're going to make a few more mistakes. Duke Wallard serving. A little bit too. The pass wasn't good. Right, not so much that Monica could do with that. She is in the back court right now. She can't jump and block. She's got to stay down below the net. Nice try, but when McFadden's there, you can't do much with that. Harden, backside, Austin. Into the net. It's really the first time I've seen her miss hit the ball. It was a great attempt on the back set by Monica. And Dubuque's pulled out here a little bit of a lead, 4-1. to one. Yeah, Spencer's hit quite a few out of the net here. 4-1, Dubuque Wallard. Nice save by Monica. And Eldon, that one's out. Calm down is what Kip Prescott wants him to do as he takes a timeout here for the Spencer Tigers as they hit a couple in the net and one ball. That's what he has to say. Right now. Prescott, the head 
coach of Spencer. Hey, good serve. Outside is cutting it, has to tap it over. It's a nice hustle by both teams, keeping the ball in play. Cher trying to go down the line, didn't want to hit through the double block. She's been hitting that line, went a little too wide this time, we've got a tie game. Spencer's wanting their crowd up. So get up, let's get some, get some help here out on the court. McFadden, and that one will be out.
scouting guy. You see they're running the fake to the middle and a one-on-one. -on -one. Kate Austin is just all over that hitter. Austin with the block and Great Kent block. Prescott will give him the service location. It's a six, signal six there is deep center back. Signal fist is a six. Center back, right serve. A double hit by Bowen. And we'll get a 10-6 lead for Spencer. And Spencer is on fire. They take a 10-6 lead over to Buke Wallet here in our game three. And Tom Keating wants a timeout. Let's see what he has to say. each other when things go on the floor. You gotta look at yourself, all right? You gotta take charge. Can't look for everybody else to do it. You gotta get it done right here, all right? Pass the serve. Shoot. Shoot, you're hitting an 11 here. Heidi, you're hitting a five. Heidi's got a five. Okay, too many in what sense they have. And a good, good point, you know, when, when the going gets tough, everybody looks at everybody else. And so you can't look at anybody else. you got to look at yourself. It's your job to get the job done. Good comments. Spencer leading 10-6 here in our game three. Here's Spencer serving. It's a great pass. Down there in the 10. Again, there it is for uh, Amy Schuster puts the ball down for Waller. One of their unsung heroes. She's strong arm, though. Boy. Dubuque, well coached, well, good fundamentals with all their players. A nice cross court hit. Side out for Dubuque. Here's Dubuque Waller here, trailing in this one 10 6. Going to Austin. Nice hustle. Oh, but out of bounds. Just outside the uh, legal limits to play the ball. We got a side out. And Austin has been unstoppable. Did you see a picture of Van Held, one of the seniors? Sonia Van Held. Five kills by Austin indeed. She's been unstoppable. Here's Tilt now serving for Spencer with them still hitting 10-6. Outside of McPen, off the double block. They'll get, keep it in play. You get a hand on it to slow it down, keeps it in play. Good dig. McPen in the middle, tapped over. And good transition. Going to Austin. Oh, pretty play. A great transition from defense to offense. Maybe we're going to see that replay again, but it was a quick, what they call it 11. 11 is a back quick to the right player. Great set and a great hit. Six kills for Austin, and you can see why Harden continues to go to her. Back set this time as they go to pencil of the view Waller for the side out. Waller's down five. They're trying to get a little bit of life here. Again, a senior-dominated team. They've been here for the third year in a row. They've been here in the state finals. Jennifer Bolan serving here for the view Waller. Austin this time will carry the ball. Oh. Didn't quite time that jump that quick. It was a nice try on the jump set. It was a high pass. It's hard to handle. Just couldn't quite get a clean contact on it. We'll get a timeout by Spencer. Kip Prescott of Spencer wants a timeout and talk things over as he feels to be forward as uh, staging a comeback here in this one. Let's see what Ken has to say here. I don't know. Katie went under the net. That's what they called there. I don't think they got it. They didn't get a hand on your set, did they? Okay, we don't want to give up. It's all right, that point's over. <laughs> we don't want to give up another point right now. Right? They've got on runs in the first two games. Get a good let's shot of the skip there. Right now, okay? Start with the pass, and let's run all three options. Come on. At first he was asking about, did they touch the, the set? The uh, opposing team cannot interfere with the setter playing the ball. They're wondering if maybe McFadden interfered with Monica. But like I said, it doesn't matter. Point's over. Let's go on to the next one. You ever see anybody with a better attitude <laughs> towards <laughs> coaching? <laughs> That's great. That's why he's here in the finals. Austin yeah. hits it into the net. That's the second time she's done that here this game. Yeah. Unusual, unlikely for her. She's played pretty consistently the whole tournament. And Dubuque's pulled within three. This Bolin now serving here outside. They're going to go to Van Helden and double block at him and they keep it in play. McFadden, one of them up there along with Don Marka. Right, great block by Dubuque. And no deep coverage for Spencer. They all got kind of sucked up in the court, got burned deep. And that serve is air into the net here by Jennifer Bolin. It's still Spencer leading 11 9, and now Spencer will serve. Kate Austin in the back court. Oh. And she serves into the net. Another service here. And they, they, both teams are trying to give this game away, I think. Here's Heidi Pencil now serving. <laughs> nice pass. And held in short set, McFadden oh. serve. McFadden says, in your face. In your face shot. Great blocking technique. You can see this over the net. That ball ain't going anywhere. 
of the net. Parents to Buke Waller, side out Spencer. Well, they haven't shied away from Van Helden going up against McFadden after the block. They keep doing it, they keep doing it. I'll tell you, they haven't dealt with their game plan. Spencer's really played a nice, nice game. Set to the outside to share. He couldn't get the timing down. Van Helden right into McFadden's uh, Couldn't see it. Chin. Or excuse me, yeah, Jennifer McFadden's right. chin. Couldn't see the ball, didn't know where it went. That's three kills for Van Helden now. And again, we got a two-point lead for Spencer. 12-10. Nice jump set by Jen Boleyn. Share down the line. She is tough. So yeah, Kelly Cher, she loves that line shot. She just really turns up in the air and crunches that line. You can see her jump and turn down that line. And that's three now. Three, three. kills for Cher. They're giving it to her. It's wide open. She's taking it. 12-10. It's still Spencer leading over to Butte Wallard. And held it. Oh, Nobody nice home. off speed shot, defense on their heels. And we'll have Sonya serving back here. Again, Spencer is just really playing a great game, leading 12 10. Feeling like they can, they can take a game off here. They can take a game off Waller. Outside the share again, this time cutting it on the line, gets the double block, but it goes out. It'll be a side out for the new caller. Right, that's what we call a tool, using the block. Two on the block. Trying to turn that in. We know Cher is going to go down the line. Right, they need to get out there real quicker. Take, a, take away that line. She's just really killing them on the line. Jackie Driscoll makes her first appearance, the 5-5 sophomore for Dubuque Wallard. Great save by Monica Harden out of the net. Three ball out here as they go over again. The Cher across court. Take off the fingertips, it was touched. It'll be good for a point. Again, mixing it up, this time going for... Going a uh, middle back, deep shot. Share with three quick points here for the Buke oh. Wallard, and what a dig by Jackie Driscoll. Nice hustle. We have and a net violation on... Against uh, Spencer, it'll be a point. We're tied at 12. 12 game, 12-12. Wallard fans are on their feet. Position six, middle back. Scudinga. Nice tip, but boy, they're playing some great defense. Cher keeps it alive. At the net, can't dig it out, it'll be a side out. Nice play by Monica, she knew she couldn't set the ball, just took it over on the second contact for the side out. Here she is back to serve. Monica Harden will now serve for Spencer. It's tied at 12 apiece here in our game three. Buke Wallard leads 2-0 in games of the match. Off the side, and that is Amy Schuster. Amy Schuster's come through some nice hits in this match. When the uh, big guns were down, she's been there right there to take up the slack. Again, off the block. Great, great serve. serve. And Spencer is passing those great serves, too. I mean, they have just really hung in there. Austin again. Nice off-speed shot, mixing it up. Tough time getting it handled, and that'll be four hits. A right, little trouble on ball control. Well, you got to take your hat off the suspension no matter what happens. They were down two games tonight, exactly. and they got a third game here tied at 12. You, considering they've only got three starters that are seniors, with their center coming back and Austin coming back, they are going to be a team to contend with. Austin to the right side. She just crunches the ball on a, what we got, another, another 11. She and Monica are having a great time. Great timing, pretty play. And eight for Austin now, and she continues to play well. Austin again will tap it over for another Great one. Play. Great heads up play for a sophomore. Game point upcoming here for and Spencer. Can't just smile at it. He likes this. He's got to like this. Nobody's taking a game off Waller except Cedar Rapids Jefferson. They've won every match 3-0. And that one's in. They're going to get a side out. Kent Prescott had a smile on his face, though. I said, Waller has only lost one game all year. <laughs> a one, game. A game, not a match. I mean, one, they won everything 3-0 except Jefferson, so it'd be quite a feat for Spencer to get a game off of him. Free ball over. 14-12. Spencer hitting to Butte Waller here in game three. McFadden taps it over. It'll be 14-13. A nice shot, shot selection by Jennifer McFadden. Amy Playing Schuster. Started last year, but broke an ankle. Back playing to 100%. Serves this with a little long. Just long, and again, Spencer will be serving for the game. Game point again for Spencer. Yeah, Christy 
Tilt. One of the eight juniors on the team. Oh, yes, great serve. Nice serve, but Dubuque handles it. McFenn serves into the double block, and Spencer picks up a game, 15-13. Oh, great, great game for Spencer. Well coached, well played, and Waller, I think, mean, just went to sleep early in the game and tried to come back, but Spencer hung on to win. There's Kent Prescott, the head coach of Spencer, as they pick up the third game away from yeah. Dubois, and let's watch the winning point. And again, start with a nice serve. They, uh, We've got uh, the big 6-1 and 6-2 block against McFadden, and no way that ball was going around that block. A great point for Spencer and a great win for Spencer. And there's the reaction of Kent Prescott <laughs> and the rest of the Spencer Tigers along the sidelines there. I think they're happy. Yeah, I would say I'd be happy to take a game off Waller, number eight team in the country. Only the second time this year they even lost a game from an Iowa team, so they got to be pretty happy about that. Well, if you enjoy sports presentations as well as cultural events, documentaries, and weekly programs here in Iowa Public Television, you should know that a group of Iowans called Friends by the funds for these programs. As a matter of fact, almost 90% of the money used for programming comes from viewers just like you. If you aren't a member of a Friends, you can show your support for quality programming by sending your check for $30 or more to Friends, Post Office Box 6400, Johnson, Iowa, 50131. That address again is Friends, Post Office Box 6400, Johnson, Iowa, 50131. Each month you'll uh, receive a complete program guide and also know that you are helping further quality programming. Thanks for your support. Well, the Buqualler still needs in games 2-1. to one. They won the first two 15-4, 15-6, but it was Spencer coming back 15-13, and that will open the eyebrows to many as many thought that maybe it might be three quick games here by the Buqualler. You know, the first two games were a pretty easy score, four and six, but Spencer really didn't play that badly, and uh, they came out and played a, a strong game. Dubuque let down a little bit, I think, but you got to give it to Spencer. They played a great game. Indeed, and Spencer and team, there's Tom Keating. Doesn't look real happy. A Spencer team that had to go five games this afternoon against Knoxville. Five games this afternoon. They had a long match. They're probably a little bit tired, but uh, shoot, they're young. What, 15, 16 years old? It's a state tournament, you know, who cares? Let's just go out and play and have fun. There's tonight attendance, 4,036 here at Five Seasons Center in Cedar Rapids. As this, and for the tournament attendance, it's 16,009. And certainly, this tournament continues to grow here at Five Seasons Center. Really? And there you can see a little bit of a debut baller team. Looks like they're a little down after that third game. I think a little surprised, probably. Like, that they're not used to losing, uh, especially in the state final. And I'm sure they had a good talking to at the uh, game break by Coach Keating. So we'll see how they rebound from that loss to Spencer. Here we go with the stats. Again, pretty evenly played game. In terms of errors, Waller made a few more mistakes that game, 8-5. to five. But even in sets, pretty even in kills, blocks. Spencer, again, two or three key blocks right at the end of that game. So a pretty even game. Individually, Spencer with Cunningham with three kills, Austin with nine kills, two blocks, Van Helder with four kills and three blocks. Waller, uh, for Waller, McFadden with four kills and two blocks, and Cher with five kills for herself as well. Again, uh, the Duke right trying to run a quick set to position three, and the set was a little high. Couldn't reach it, so we get a point for Spencer. Here's Spencer off of the right foot again, a deep serve. Nice Which, dump. Get it? Nice. Get the, uh, pull in. Nice dump by Jen Bowen. Saw the open spot on the court and just takes the ball over with her left hand on that second contact. Here's to be Wallard serving. Gonna have to Austin, just gonna have to try and yeah, tap it over the fence, but you're right back at her. It'll be an illegal hit by Austin. All right, a little ball control problem with uh, it's the first time I've seen Monica not really control the ball well, even on the move. So we had a tie game. 1-1, one, one, all tied up here in our fourth game of this 2A championship. Oh, man, oh. Sonia Van Helden, hello. The hardest thing I think she's hit all, all, all the day I've seen her. She really crunched that ball. Great hit for Sonia. Good serve again. They'll go again to McFadden down the middle. 
And great defense back there by Christy Tilt. The outside, they go to Nan Cruz. Good save outside there. A little both tap teams, over. Both teams playing some great defense. And held it. Oh, she gets the roll off the net. It's still alive off the net. Boom, that was a great dig. See who they go to with a quick, oh. And again, oh, man, held it. Oh, missed the oh. timing on it. A little bit of a misconnection there, but a great rally, great defense by both teams. Tanya Van Helden just missed the timing. And it's been working for him. Unfortunately, it didn't work this time. Buke Wallard getting ready to serve with Jennifer Bolin, number nine, the setter. Right at the uh, net, block Van Helden. Block served by 6'2", Sonia Van Helden. I bet Dubuque Wallard doesn't see that very often. Right, uh, high school, you can block, block the serve. Cannot do that in college or USUBA rules. That a long serve is oh, out. It'll be a side out here for the new forward and number eight, Heidi Pemsel. 1-1 one, one, tied up here in game four. It's 2-1 in games for the new forward. Got Pemsel serving for Dubuque. And Eldon down the middle. Somebody's in the net. Apparently Dubuque forward and side out. Either a Cher or McFadden in the net for Dubuque. Last game of this game, kind of uncharacteristic mistakes being made by Dubuque Waller. All right, a little bit, uh, a little sloppy from Waller. Here we've got uh, Skate caught in. Kate Scott in with her jump serve. Jump serve again indeed. Outside this chair, trying to go down the line. Scouting got oh. double block, McFadden up there on the net. Great block by McFadden and Markham. Great twosome. It's getting a little frustrated. It's like, come on, you guys, let's get busy out here. Oh, excellent penetration. Great tick, great coverage on the block. McFadden now serving for Dubuque Waller. She's not a bad server either. Oh. It's a real high contact. With that height, she really can get the ball to drop. Scouting guy for Spencer gets the side out. She has been really pounding the ball from the outside. One of their seniors, one of the three seniors starting for Spencer. Jenny Shedigan. Here's Harden serving. Yeah, come on. Just yeah, tapping come on. it over. Good uh, decision by Scott, by uh, Schuster. And again, going back to Kate Austin, who's been pretty much unstoppable on the right side. And we got a 2 1 game. Again, a slow developing game, just like game three. It really took a while for it to kind of get on, get on track for both teams. Set to McFadden for the back row. That one's in. Nice backcourt attack by Jen McFadden. She can hit it anywhere. You can see here she takes off from behind the 10 foot line with her jump and her arm swing and her reach. She's going to be a great backcourt attacker. Serving here, Tracy Wizard. A carry against Spencer will be good for a point and you do blow right now. A little tough pass to handle. Monica had a little bit of a ball handling here. Tied up at two apiece, and they serve it into the net. Again, a lot of service errors for both teams. 2-2 two, two to be forward in Spencer, and Kip Prescott gives the signal. Position one is the serving position, right back. Across the way, they go to Cher. And she is just long, and no touch. Balls out, point, Spencer. So you think uh, the Buick fans are a little bit in shock here. Here's Spencer with a great serve. Another serve, a serve for Spencer. We got a 4-2 lead for Spencer. They are not putting. 4-2, Spencer takes the lead and still serving here. Deep serve and they get an ace. Jenny Scudding in with an ace. Tracy Wizarek's gonna be taken out. Jackie Driscoll to be quality is gonna be brought in. Little substitution. One thing about Jenny, she is the number one student in her class with a 4-point GPA. Two service aces in a row by Spencer to give him a 5-2 lead. Bolin will get to set it up to the outside. Still to Schuster. And a carry against Spencer. It'll be a side out. A little mis miscommunication there. Playing off the block. And Dubuque gets the ball back on the side out. Down 5-2. Here's Shearer serving for Dubuque. Oh, great serve. Is it in? It is. I believe they called a net. It, it tipped the net, I guess, as it went over. It looked good, but the, the uh, up official felt the ball tip the net. So we're calling a side out. 5-2, Spencer leading here, and Spencer serving. That's uh, Monica Tilton back there. Christy Tilton, excuse me. Going along, going over. Didn't get a big 
Penn with the pencil on that one. There's a little delay, a little up early, and uh, kind of threw off the block. So another side out. Again, this game has just gone back and forth. No one really taking control. Lots of side outs. Kelly Westoff now serving here for the view baller. How much of a chance to get it set, so now that'll be Dubuque Wallard. Great nice block, double block. Nice coverage by Dubuque. This Tip. time they go over the top. And Monica's there to pick it up. Here's Van Helden with a kill attempt. Doug out of there. Get a free ball, see what they can do with it here. Austin and gets it down, Austin. A great back click. Again, almost every free ball, they're running that play with Kate Austin coming in quick for a back set, and they have just been unstoppable with that play, and Tom is not happy with that. <laughs> As Fincher has jumped out to a 5-2 lead, now they're going to go to McFadden, and that one will be down. It's like, enough of this, let's go. Jennifer, Jennifer McFadden gets it down, let's see the replay, look at that arm. Really, just a great arm swing, puts it right inside the block. Spencer still leading 5-2, that's failed height. Just like right back in your face. Van Helden, excuse me. Van Helden had a great hit there. Again, the quick attacks seem to be working for uh, for Spencer. We saw Austin in the third, but now it's Van Helden in the fourth. Game here for Spencer. Yeah, just having a great game and a mistake by Jennifer McFadden. A little bit off on timing, and Dubuque calls a timeout. Tom Keating finds his Dubuque Waller. Golden Eagles, the number one team down 6-2. Let's see what he has to say in the game. Is this how you want to go out? Is this how you want? Yeah, you're acting like it. You guys are serving so easy, they're running anything they want over there. And you're serving, you're either trying to serve line drives at the lines, or you're serving the ball sky high. I want the ball below the top of the antenna. It doesn't need to be at the back. It doesn't need to be at the net. It needs to be below the top of the antenna. We got to side him out here, go two again, take a swing at the ball. Let's go. You see a little frustration with the way he's his team is playing, not indicative of the way they've played all year. And again, they're playing a little uh, conservative, but he wants them to play a little bit more aggressively. Let's start serving tough and hitting, taking a swing at the ball. Well, Spencer winning 6-2 here and serving. Let's see if they do. I set to the middle of McFadden. That one's going to be long and out. Going to be a point. Make it 7-2, Spencer. All right, and a little uh,
substitutions incoming here as they check in with Amy Schuster out of the front line. And Jennifer Dubuque. McFadden is serving here for Dubuque. Dubuque's had a way to come back. They're down 3-9. Spencer has some momentum. They're playing much more. Oh, my. Jenny Scudinga. Jenny Scudinga again, number one student in her class. Shows she can be number one on the court, too. She's just been playing great, aggressive volleyball. Just cuts it inside the block. Here's Harden serving now. Nine serving three. Spencer leads. Going outside to Cher. Oh, nice kill by Kelly Cher. Again, Dubuque just hoping to get their offense back on track. And that's Cher's first kill of the game. Well, she's had a couple off games here, hitting some balls out. It's a nice kill for her. Get back in. We've got an ace serve by Jackie Bristol. The sophomore coming in. Trying to get her team fired up. And a timeout by Spencer. Spencer with Kip Prescott takes a timeout. Let's go. We're right in this now, but we've got to remember, when you guys are short, you always pass the short one first, then you go ahead, all right? I know it's basic, but let's keep it in mind, all right? Um, left back. Let's come over, or middle backs, let's come over here and just camp on this line with that high outside. I mean, get one foot out of bounds, and let's take their best shot, all right? Come on. All right, she's wanting him, he's wanting them to uh, swing out a little bit defensively on the angle. They've been burned a couple times there. And, it, and it reminding his uh, front court players they've got to pass first on a short ball, on a short serve or a free ball. First responsibility is passing, then worry about hitting. Well, you got to remember, it was tied at two up at one point, and now it's Spencer leading 9-4 with Dubuque forward serving. Outside, going to Austin. And she goes right off the block. She can hit on the outside, right side, and again, Monica Harden doing a great job setting the ball to her. Super hit swing, and the block a little bit late. Here's the serve, it's out. Just out for Spencer. Cher will now serve. Looking for the signal. She's ready. Great serve. Right on the line. Great serve. Wallet needed that to get a point back on Spencer. Still down 9-5. Again, great serve to the position two. Here's Cher serving again here for the view Wallet. This time they'll set up Austin. Didn't get much of a hit on it. All right, set a little off the net. She just kept it in play. A nice Schuster. deep cross court shot by Amy Schuster. They tried it earlier, Sandy, and couldn't get it down, but that one they did. All right, she kept the ball a little bit more up front and was able to control it. 9 6, Cher still serving here, and Spencer still leading. There's Austin off the double block. They'll blocks, set it up. Block slows it down. They go outside to Pencil. Set near side. Little tap over. And Bolin tries to tap it over and doesn't get it down. A little too far off the net for a left-hand tip. And she pushes it into the net. Spencer winning 9-6 will be serving. Number one, Dubuque Ballard. Number four, is Spencer. Dubuque Ballard won the first two games, but Spencer won the third and leading in the fourth. And that one is in. It's just what Coach Prescott had talked about. They're getting burned on the angle. Those the uh, left back players not getting wide enough, and it happened right there again. Pencil with three kills, and here's one of them right, right there. there. He was saying, get out there on that line and guard that angle. They didn't get there, but Waller missed their serve, so uh, Spencer lucks out on that one. Service error will bring up Spencer, hitting 9-6. Here is number 14, Katie Austin, serving. Great pass. And they go to McFadden down the middle. <laughs> they don't even hide it. Crunch time. I mean, that was... <laughs> she hit that ball, I think. <laughs> Great hit just inside the block. Way to cut it around the block. Well, and serving here for Dubuque Pollard. Quick set to Van Helden. Are they going to be a carry? I don't think Sonja Van Helden was expecting it. Right. Uh, she's a little bit under the ball. Didn't have good position, ended up pushing it. Dubuque's gap within two. Boland still serving. Nice pass by Tilton. Van Helden again trying to get down the line, but nothing there. Almost. There's a nice try in the line, a little too greedy. Swing it outside a little too far. We've got a one-point game and a timeout by Spencer. Yeah, Kim Prescott feels the pressure of Dubuque Wallard here, and Prescott takes and a timeout. Is hitting the Let's ball. go to the huddle. And we don't have a double block. It's not just a kill. It's a 
chance of somebody getting hurt. Now you double block in the middle every time. Read it. We don't have to be that fine. You don't have to paint the line. All right? Put it in. We don't want to let them back in with our errors, and we just did. You hit it out, and you didn't block. Now, come on. We've been cruising along great in games three and four because we've been playing well, and they've been making the error. Now, let's not us make the error that we can avoid. Come on. Good coaching. He's talking about the, uh, the last hit before that with McFadden. Only had one blocker. He said, that's not bad blocking. Somebody can get hurt with somebody hitting like her. So get two blockers up there. And again, they're getting a little too greedy trying to hit right on the line. Just put it down the line, not on the line. Outside, Austin keeps it alive. McFadden will get it back here. Short set to her. And she'll get it down for the kill and the point. Great. She's helped bring him back in this game. Nine all. for McFadden and it's 9-9. Nine, nine. He's got a great set by Bowling. And that'll be four hits if they hit it. Another point for Dubuque Waller. They're on a roll. All right, up 11-9 again. Spencer's making a lot of unforced errors. They've taken their two timeouts. So they're going to have to regroup on the floor without a timeout. Uh, Coach Prescott is doing a, a substitution right now to kind of slow things down, but he's out of timeout. They're going to have to do it, on, do it on their own out on the court. Dubuque Waller has come back from a 3-9 deficit to take a 10-9 lead, but Spencer answers well. All right, and that goes credit for, again, Monica Hart and a great back set over to Gail Schreiner. Gail was ready to put the ball down. Certainly have seen our swings here in this state tournament, and this is no different. Well, and Nan Cruz here serving. One of the three seniors for Spencer. Can't and dig it out. A serve. And we got a 10 all game. What a game. Game four. Spencer playing for their life. Let's see the ace. Nice serve. Again, Spencer fighting to get into game five. And Waller fighting for their third straight state championship. McFadden with another kill. Again, they, they had two blocks up that time for Spencer. But still, McFadden hit right through it. You can see two blockers go up. But again, not enough to... Uh, to take care of McFadden. Pimsoll serving, it's 10-10, trying to tap it over, but McFadden is there. All right, and that was a tight pass. Again, the coverage wasn't there for Spencer to help out uh, Monica Hart. And McFadden continues, three kills and a block here in the last a few plays, but now another error on the serve. Lots of service errors for Dubuque this time. McFadden has been the one here to for Dubuque Ballard, and they lead 11-10 with Spencer serving. Got Sonia Van Helden serving for Spencer. Outside to Scher, down the line. And she crunches the ball. What? Nice line shot by Kelly Scher. Now the kids watch the replay. Again, great, great line shot. Defense not able to react. Now you got McFadden in the back line, and she's serving. Nice serve by Jenny. That's going to be an ace. Nice serve by Jenny McFadden. She's got such long arms, and she's already 6'1". She just reaches so high and gets a great trajectory on the third. 12-10, Dubuque Waller leading over Spencer now in our game four. McFadden again, looking for another ace. This time they'll return it. He's got to get camp. Yeah, a little late on her approach. That was a little low. And Dubuque can taste it. They're two points away from their third straight state championship. See the replay here a little bit late getting in. Here's the serve. Long set from the back row. They're going to have been held if it no. They're trying a backcourt attack. It was a nice drive. Go to one of your big hitters. We got a substitution for Spencer. Again, they've taken both their timeouts. Game point, match point. And the uh, fans in the crowd are on 
Robin Waller to dig by McBeth for the back row. Here's Schuster, good dig, and they can't bring it back. It'll be a side out to Dubuque Waller. Great scramble by Spencer. You got Kelly Scher. Game point again and match point for Dubuque Waller, and the Waller fans have not sat down on me. That is not a eight, eight <laughs> service. Oh, there. Okay, Tom's probably ready to pull his hair out over there. Coach King is saying, I can't believe you guys cannot serve the ball in the court. Drop <laughs> kick it over. Here's the serve by Spencer and a missed you by Jennifer McFadden. Oh, boy. It's 14-12. We're going to let Spencer back in this game. 14-12, Dubuque. There you can hear Kip Prescott of Spencer. Here's the serve, a good one. A tough serve. If you candles it, they go back to Kelly Shear. Good double block. Great block over there by McFadden at the deck. Taps it over, gets the side out. And held, couldn't quite reach over far enough to hold that ball. We've got match point again. Amy See, Schuster. To hold them Seven kills now and then. Here comes Amy Schuster to serve. She gets it over. Great serve. McFadden at the deck. And that is good, and they win it. 15-12, the Buke Ward, after serving so many in the net, finally gets one over, and they win another championship. The final score of the game four was 15-12, and the Buke Waller takes 3-1 to one in games against Spencer, but boy, take nothing away from the Tigers. I tell you, I thought Spencer was going to come back in, but they had the lead most of that fourth game. Play great, but Waller, the championship for him, came back and played a great match. You can hear Tom oh, fighting. Yeah, it really well. Nice. And Kip Prescott. It's nice to play against somebody that you're not fighting with. Yeah. The head coaches, and uh, certainly the two uh, class people, uh, which right. certainly have their programs going the right way. To be quiet, a real established program, and uh, Spencer, a nice program, really kids done a great job out there. One of the leading programs in the state also. Well, certainly many people, of course, thought to be forward would win, but Spencer certainly made people stay around and made one exactly. heck of an effort. I think most people thought Wallet would probably walk through in about three games, and uh, Spencer, even though they lost the first two games, they came back and just played a great match, and what's uh, good for them, they've got all but three players coming back. They'd lose three seniors. They'll be back here next year, I'm sure. One heck of a match here this evening in our 2A championship is Dubuque Wallard. Let's watch the winning point here with Amy Schuster serving. Okay, it was a great serve for the overpass. McFadden, who else with the kill? Indeed. What a way to finish your senior season with the kill point on uh, state championship. And there you can see the reaction, and I think yes. Tom Kidding's still waiting to see <laughs> <laughs> if that's over or not. I don't know. If, here I think he's going to get a little smile. There he goes. I said, it probably didn't play as well as he'd like them to play, but a win's a win, and I'm sure he'll run. Let's go down to our presentations with George Turner.
Championship runner-up trophy goes to Coach Kent Prescott and the Spencer Tigers.